security in Internet of Things is one of the hottest topics. Today, we will hear this being discussed between Mats Anderson of Ublox and Robin Duke Woolley of Beecham Research. Knowing that the right software is running in the module, let's start mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, based on that, then you can go further on knowing that you actually can connect to the internet in the correct way, knowing that you can secure data from the end point, one end point to another end point completely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But not only that, there's also interfaces within the systems that you need to secure so that you can't get into the systems. Securing the end-to-end -end security is not only end-to-end, -end, it's also uh, securing the radio link as such. Mm -hmm. So you, may, you need to have an encrypted radio link so you so don't have any people in the middle of a radio link, link listening to the, to the communication the as well. Listening into it, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. yes. Maybe manufacturing is much more to do with uh, real-time information, uh, and that might change the requirement for security. Well, it does change the requirement yeah, for security yeah, yeah. a bit. And one issue with real-time is, of course, that by adding security, you can actually influence the real-time a lot. Mm -hmm. Because one thing we've found with some of our customers in industrial is that real-time issues can be a problem because when you add a lot of authentication, a lot of uh, extra encryption and so on, you get, you get delays yes. based on that. And that yes. might be a problem in many mm -hmm. industrial customers. And also, um, uh, communicating between partners, so you yeah. know the the output from uh, one factory or one process, and is, it, is the input to another process, yeah. and making sure that it all fits together. Yeah. Uh, so there's, it's not it's not just maintenance, but that that's obviously a, a key yeah. one. Yeah. But uh, but also the uh, the interaction between yeah. uh, different yeah. parties, and that that leads to uh, quite a lot of uh, potential attack points. I mean, I think it starts with um, a sort of secure root of trust. Yeah. Um, it's, it, it, the, so you have a secure point, yeah. and uh, and then you've got little islands of uh, of trust which you can then move out from. Yeah, it's very important to, to secure the system from from the root, so to say, right. and, and and also have a kind of a secure identity on the device, for example, mm -hmm. knowing that you, it's the right device you're talking to, for example. So the root of trust is, 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 is really important and it provides us with the opportunity for uh, creating uh, like secure elements within a, a bigger environment. Mm. But I think that uh, we need to perhaps think about how urgent it is to, yeah. uh, to get on with this stuff. Um, yeah. uh, you know, certainly in the surveys that we do of, uh, of adopters, um, security is always comes out as the, uh, the top issue. Yeah. But I think that there is equally um, not much knowledge about how to address it. And you kind of see devices slipping out today, I think, that is already, mm. that is not really secured already. So I think it's really urgent to do anything about it. And uh, now, historically, it's been mostly consumer-oriented thing that has been kind of on the agenda. But you mm. see more dangerous things. You remember the Stuxnet, for example, yeah. uh, that were, where we actually interfered with computer systems in, that was industrial, in, yes, in uh, Iran, mm. Iran nuclear plants actually. Right. But, and, um, the main problem there was actually the communication link between the devices. I mean, the requirements are for sure higher mm. in business to business than yeah. the consumer. But certainly, um, certainly the, the, the implications of, of something going wrong <laughs> are, yeah. are potentially more expensive. Yeah, but the, the thing, thing is that but when it comes to kind of get, I mean, I get bad press, for example, I mean, the right. consumer is even worse money in many cases. Right. Yeah. But, but of course, the implications could be much bigger, could be really even in safety related systems mm -hmm. that people can get into those systems. And if you get into those systems and, for example, install wrong software, yeah. then you are in really big problems. What were you thinking of when, when you were talking about uh, security? Were you, were you thinking of public or private or you know, consumer or, or business? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, uh, I mean a security could be... I mean, I, for, my, for me, this Internet of Things is everything. I mean, yeah. I, you, you will connect everything, all from the simplest consumer devices to yeah. the most advanced uh, industrial devices and medical devices. Mm. So, I mean, it's... Uh, and that's the thing, because and, and the problem we see is that the people in industry, for example, industrial area automation, for example, they, they, they understand the problem, mm -hmm. really, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to handle it in most cases. And that may, might, might even mean that they hesitate to connect to the internet, maybe too much in some cases. I think that's one of our uh, goals as a company, to provide infrastructure mm -hmm. that supports those means. Mm. easily in the product, so that you have a support for a product in our products that makes it easy for the customers to connect to the internet in a secure way. People are fear 
uh, yeah. connecting to the internet, and they clearly do. I mean, our surveys clearly indicate that uh, people yeah. are more concerned about security than, than anything else. Yeah. That will put them off, and then the benefits that they can get from that exactly. are, are missed completely, and, and they don't move forward, and they don't, uh, in the business-to-business -business world, they then don't improve their competitive position no, no, in the marketplace. Exactly. I mean, even the smallest Bluetooth chip today right. has a rather advanced security accelerators today mm -hmm. in the chips. Yeah. A need to have, because, for example, a new Bluetooth mesh, for example, I think it said it was to, to one, for one communication, there is uh, six or seven encryptions, mm. decryptions happening. Wow. Yeah. That's a because, lot. Because there are different la many layers. Because you have link layers, you have application layers, you have network layers. Yeah. So there's a lot of encryption that's happening on, on its way. Just to, that yeah. you want to secure everything. And then you need hardware encryption, even if it's a little small uh, yeah. two by two millimeter Bluetooth chip. Right. So it's, uh, but a hardware encryption as opposed to a software encryption is, is presumably faster. Much, much faster. Because, it, because it's not relying on a processor. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. We're getting now into these low power type of applications, much more into, into low power applications yeah. and the security need is just as high. We often have devices that are uh, talking very seldom to the, to the outer, outer world, yes, maybe right. uh, once a day even. Right. Right. And then you need to be able to solve the security updates on that type of scenarios too. Mm. See, if you have a Bluetooth Luenery device again, for example, yeah. that uh, runs in a network but not connected to the internet, so to say. Mm -hmm. So uh, what we're looking into is to do s updates to, via proxies. Say that you have a, a phone that moves around, you take the phone with you into the factory and move around in the factory. Oh, I see. Yeah, right. And then you connect securely to the to a server that has the update right. the image and you update the devices in the factory. It's not only keeping track of the firmware, it's also keeping track of all the devices the customers mm. have we want to do. Mm. You do it, may make it up possible to do things like update campaigns mm -hmm. so that you know that all those devices the customer owns is updated. Right. Coming back to this about secure identity again. You right. need, need to have a secure identity knowing which device you update and so on. Ultimately, uh, the customer needs to decide, like the, the enterprise user, for example, yeah. needs to decide just how much security yeah. they need for their application, uh, for their particular use. Um, yet, there's a feeling that they don't really know enough to be able to say how much security they need or don't need. No. Um, so, when we talk about a value chain, for example, yeah. and the security of the value chain, it's important that each uh, component supplier within that value chain yeah. is looking at the security needs. But if we just leave it up to the value chain to decide for that user, um, I don't think that that will work, will it? No, in many cases not. Um, and for sure you can... The thing is that, for example, in many cases you, your end-to-end -end application, for example, the, the, the one end is our device, the other end is might be a cloud service somewhere. Mm -hmm. And of course, yeah. depending on which cloud service you select, yeah. you might get different levels of, of uh, security. Should we actually do retrofitting, do you think? Because uh, um, there is a view, and I think, you know, I probably agree with this view, that uh, uh, to retrofit into uh, existing applications is, is fraught with difficulty. Yeah. Um, and that uh, it's better really to uh, start fresh. So that the new stuff that you put in has security elements within it mm. and then everything else that you have to sort of uh, look at the risk management associated with it. Yeah. Retrofitting like the components I think is, uh, is fraught with difficulty and yeah. uh, ultimately I, d I can't think of any situation where it's actually been successful. I mean, if you take industrial system automation, for example, it's, it's very, uh, in many cases, very old systems. They have been running for many, many years. Oh. It, they have uh, limited computing power. Mm -hmm. They are using protocols on, inter on, the, on the network level that's rather 
bad, so to say. Yes. So it's many, many cases, very, very, very difficult to retrofit these type of systems. Mm. We also see that uh, what we see, for example, in many cases, that, that there is that factories put in an, an additional infrastructure on beside the on, current on, one. on top of it. Yes, yes. sort because, of as an overlay. Uh, because yeah. they don't want to actually touch. Mm. The other reason why they don't want to touch a system. I mean, it is, we talked about that earlier. That the I mean, that's systems is critical to downtime and things like that. Mm. Yeah. So they might even put an infrastructure beside it. Typically, uh, preventive maintenance. If you want to have a preventive maintenance systems in a factory line, for example, mm -hmm. you could yeah. put in sensors and all stuff, other stuff, in parallel with a control system, and that you could, that you could, could secure, secure yes. up to the internet yes. and use preventive maintenance. You don't necessarily need to connect it to the internet actually to get that um, data yeah. analytics information so long as you can find a way of storing it yeah. locally and then you can you can capture it and then manually um, connect it. And Internet of Things could also be connecting device in an intranet as a matter of fact mm -hmm. inside a factory because the same technologies could be used of course. Mm. So, uh, so but even there you need to have a higher level of security in many cases than you have in the past because there are attacks points at factories too internet, yeah. Yeah, and if you have wireless mm. connections as we are doing Mm -hmm. then you have automatically an attack, attack point in the wireless link. But on the other hand, a, a wireless link, so for, for example, for an external maintenance company, mm -hmm. it, it makes more sense probably to use a wireless link into the factory yeah. than to try and go through the firewall and do yeah, it yeah, through yeah. For, for, yeah. for a fixed line, something yeah. like that. It's much quicker to implement yeah. and probably easier to secure as well. It's fair to say, isn't it, that there'll be a, a sort of hubbing type of exactly. arrangement. So exactly. you'd use cellular perhaps for the external link and you don't need so many of those perhaps, yeah. but you need lots of internal links. Yeah. And the more uh, local sensors that you have, the more yeah. will need to be connected wirelessly yeah. using uh, a short range technology. When it comes to security, that means that you have a new, new problem actually. Because mm -hmm. then you might have a, have a short range link, then you have a gateway, and then you have a link to the internet. Yes. And then you have an intermediate point here. And you might have different levels of security on the first part of the link. Mm -hmm. And you might have an open kind of attack point in the middle because you don't have end-to-end uh, -end security, typically, in many cases. Mm. Because the local link has one security, and the remote link has another security. And there will be one point where the, where the data is kind of disclosed. And that's something we also look a lot into. Can we use the same type of authentication that we maybe used authentication from the cellular network down into the, into the small sensors, too? Mm -hmm. So you have, can have the same kind of level of security all the way through the sh uh, short range network. Of course, you could always have an IP link, TCP IP link from the node mm. all the way up, but in many cases you can't, you don't have that. Mm. You have a separate kind of protocol, the first, first source level. So that will be a new problem. So it might become more expensive. And that might even mean that some users will be hesitant to use it yeah. because it's too expensive. It's too expensive. Yeah. 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 And uh, then the cost, for co because cost is still a prohib prohibiting factor for security in many cases, I think. For us, as a company, I think it's very important that we make this easy to do for, uh, for the customers, mm. and even cheap, of course, c comparable, yeah. so that so it should be easy for them to implement. Maybe not do a lot of things themselves. Our devices helps the customers to do yes. a secure link. You, you lose your face yes. if, you, if, you, yes. uh, if your system are hacked. Right. I mean, that could be even more expensive. Yes. So that's a cost that is, could be enormous for a company. Yes. It could lose the whole, whole reputation. What we're beginning to see, uh, so for example, we, we work very closely with the IoT Security Foundation in the yeah. UK, and they're coming out with guidelines. Yeah. Um, and then associated with that, they're giving or creating a trust mark. Uh, yeah. that, uh, so those people that conform to the guidelines or you know, yeah. respond to the guidelines can get a trust mark, which then they can use in, in advertising. What I've always felt is that the, uh, the way that the IoT market grew up was you know, individual sales opportunities, basically, and the, uh, the technology was pushed on um, enterprise users. Mm -hmm. But what we've ended up with is um, quite a lot of little islands of use, mm -hmm. even within one organization, and they don't necessarily interwork. No, no. Um, there's no reason why they would actually. So, for example, a fleet management system might be being used at one part, and then uh, a 
tank monitoring system or an industrial control system in a different part. And if we talk about security in that context, it's kind of interesting too, because if they develop security in different ways, using different algorithms and different mm -hmm. ways of doing it, they can't even talk to each other. They can't even talk to each other, yes. So, yes. It's, so it's, uh, and that was also a place for a standard, of course, yeah. knowing that you follow this standard. In, in wireless links like uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, mm -hmm. you can say that there are standards because they define the standards, mm -hmm. the Wi-Fi standards and the Bluetooth standards and the cellular standards, security levels and things like that. So mm -hmm. there are some standards that people can call for. And we see that, for example, in, in, in automotive manufacturing, we see people calling for enterprise level security on Wi-Fi using EAP, TLS, that's really technical mm. comment from, from, a, from a customer of us, because that's a standard they can refer to. Mm.